Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me as we continue our look at the 2007 Hypatia Contest. We are on question number two, if you're looking for the very first question uh, involving Penny and her travels. That is uh, the previous video. We are on question two here. So, uh, Oleak has four pails labeled P, Q, R, and S, each containing some marbles. A uh, legal move is to take one marble from each of three of the pails and put the marbles into the fourth pail. This is a parody problem. I have seen this. Uh, I have seen this quite recently presented. At, um, not this exact question, but this, this concept here presented at a math camp. So I'm going to try and go through this question without knowing that the answer involves parody, but uh, I do apologize if it seeps through, uh, and, and I do sort of jump on the answer there. But... Let's, uh, let's continue reading this one. So, three marbles, and then you put another in the, into the fourth pail. Okay, the, the pail that you didn't pick from. Initially, the pails contain nine, nine, one, and five marbles. Describe a sequence of legal moves that results in six marbles in each pail. Nine plus nine is 18, plus one is 19, plus five is 24. 24 divided by four pails, you should be able to get six marbles in theory, uh, but the actual movements uh, a little harder. So, um, what to do here? So these nines have to be brought down to sixes, so I think I can probably do it in, in three moves, and for each of those three moves we are taking from, from both of these buckets, and then I think we'll put some in this bucket with one, and then one time we'll probably put it in the bucket with three. You don't have to describe it, uh, like describe ooh, how I thought of this. You just need to come up with a sequence that will work. And playing around with it will be just fine. So I'm going to take from this bucket, this bucket, and this bucket, and put them all into this bucket. So we get 8, 8, 4, and 4. Okay. And then from there, we are going to take from these two buckets. I said I was going to do that every time. Uh, it doesn't matter which one we do here. I'll take from that bucket, and then we add three to this bucket. So that's seven, seven, three, and seven. And now I will take from these two or these three buckets and add them all in here. Six, 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 six. Okay. This is my sequence of legal moves. I have, I mean, you, you can say things like uh, label this A, this B, and this C, and you can say I'm going to take from all but C and put them into C. That would be a fine way to describe it. I think just the minus ones and the pluses works just great. Okay. So, um, I would like to point out that sometimes when you've seen a problem before, uh, like if you've seen, this is parody and... and uh, this type of question is occasionally presented to people. If you've seen a question uh, like that before, hooray, you've got a leg up on the people who haven't seen a question like this before. Um, but the challenge is um, if you understand that concept, you might, when you're proving things, take a few things for granted. Say, oh, yes, yes, I remember that's the way it works. And so you, you, you might not explain it as well as somebody who's discovering this for the first time. And so that is a trap that you can fall into if you already know something. Um, like not explaining your notation or this definition in, in whatever. Uh, so that, that can be a bit of a challenge. So just, just because you've seen a question before doesn't mean you're going to get 10 out of 10 on it. That's, that's the major pitfall is that you might skip something because you know the question. Okay, so B part. Suppose that the pails initially contain 31, 27, 27, and 7 marbles. After a number of legal moves, each pail contains the same number of marbles. Describe a sequence of legal moves to obtain the same number of marbles in each pail. Explain why at least 8 legal moves are needed to obtain the same number in each pail. Well, let's figure out what that same number should be. We've got some pretty big numbers, and I'm betting the answer will be something like 23. You know, 23 will be the average here, because then to get from the 31 down to the 23, uh, we'll have to take at least eight moves. There's no way to remove multiple marbles from a pail in a given move. Okay, at best, we can remove one, and I think that would be the argument. But this is just a guess. Let's actually figure out... Uh, 
So let us determine the number in each pail we want at the end. So total number of marbles, that's 31 plus 27 plus 27 plus 7. And that is, well, I haven't used it yet, so I'm going to bust out my calculator. 31 plus 27 plus 27 plus 7. And that's uh, 85 plus 7, so that should be 92. 92 over 4 is, hey, 23 in each pail. So I think before I try and find a sequence of moves, which I don't think will be especially hard, um, but before I... Uh, uh, describe my sequence of moves because they didn't ask to, to uh, they, they, they didn't ask them in a particular order so I'm going to say um, I'm going to prove that you have to use at least eight moves so any move removes at most one marble from the, the 31 pail which, you know, you could probably call it A and this one B and this one C. So you could say from A. Because after one move, it's not going to be the 31 pale. It's going to be the 30 pale. To get it down to 23 uh, requires... At least, and now we have to move over to this other page, at least eight marbles removed. Therefore, at least eight moves. You might get more if you if one of the steps adds something to the 31 pale, but to go from 31 down to 23, you have to remove, you can only remove at most one marble. So we need eight marbles removed. That means at least eight moves. Okay. Uh, so now I want to describe my sequence of moves. So 31, 27, 27, and 7. These two 27s are going to be a tad pesky, I think. Um, so we might have to add something to them at some point. Because... Uh, Every move we're going to be doing, we're getting rid of, of something here. So it'll be 30, and then 29, and then 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, and then finally down to 23. And we're going to be removing one from that pail each time. They didn't, did they ask to do a sequence? No, they just said describe a sequence of legal moves to do it. They didn't say our legal moves has to be eight. But we could describe why at least, you know, maybe there's some fluke here and nine has to be done. But we do know at least eight. Um, hmm. I'm going to get this seven up real quick. So we'll get 26, 26, 10. So 25, 25, and 13. Uh, 24, 24, 16, 23, 23, 19, uh, 22, 22, and 22, hooray, and now minus 1, minus 1, plus 3 will get you to 25, and here's where the 27s go off the rails a bit, uh, so we'll go down to 20, this one will become 24, and this one will become 24, and then each of these removed one, and add 3 here, 23, 23, 23. Okay, there we go. So, we don't have to justify this, uh, our notation is clear, I would say, if you wanted to, you could say, you know, uh, a minus 1 below a number means we're going to take from that pile, but I think we're fine here. 
Okay. So at least eight moves, and here's one that uses exactly eight moves, even though we could have made one that uses 20 moves or something, and that still would have answered the question, because they did not say uh, minimum number of legal moves or anything like that. Okay. So now C part, and this is where I think my parody is going to come in. Uh, beginning again, the pails contain eight, uh, 10, 8, 11, and 7 marbles. Explain why there is no sequence of moves. Yeah, yeah, there it is. So we created some sequences, but now we're going to have to describe why there is no sequence of legal moves. And we're going to have to stop and analyze these sequences of moves. Okay, so beginning again, the pails contain 10, 8, 11, and 7 marbles. Describe, explain why there is no sequence of legal moves that results in an equal number of marbles in each pail. Now, for people who have seen this before, and uh, uh, you know, you, you probably know why, but we don't actually care what the, the even number would be. So 10 plus 8, 18, 11 plus 7, 18. So you should be getting 9 in each pail if you can do it evenly. But that 9 is not what matters. We don't actually care about that number 9. Uh, the challenge for this one is we have we don't know what legal moves we, we want to take. You could make a giant tree diagram of all the legal moves and just show, you know, eventually you're never going to settle down on 9999. Um, but that's that's going to take a long time. What you should be doing is sort of experimenting about and saying, well, what's different with these starting numbers than any of my previous starting numbers? Okay, and what happens as we move these numbers around? And I'll show you what happens. And uh, I've already said, like, screamed parody a couple times, so you might understand a little bit where I'm going with this. But, you know, let's just, just pick some stuff. You know, maybe we have to go up a bit first, and we get 9, uh, nine and 7, and, and 14, and, uh, and a 6 here. Now, uh, and, you know, maybe maybe that 9's fine, but uh, we got to take, take from somewhere. And then uh, we get 8, and, and 10, and, and 13, 5, that sort of stuff. We're starting to rearrange these, but... We're not going to settle down on all nines, and notice why. There's uh, sort of these two numbers, these, these two buckets are sort of linked in a way, and these two buckets are linked in a very special way. And it all comes down to how we're actually uh, uh, manipulating, what, what our rules are. So notice that 10 and 8 even numbers, then we get two odd numbers, then we get two even numbers. Next, no matter what we do, we will get two odd numbers. Start with two odds here, then we'll get two evens, then we'll get two odds. Okay, why is this happening? Well, our, our rules notice that any legal move Removes one marble from three pails and adds three to another. So, not exactly what the numbers are changing to, but so the, the numbers, the number of marbles in each pail changes, and here's the key, changes by an odd amount each move. doesn't matter what moves, but it changes by an odd amount each move. You know, are you adding them to the middle bucket, or are you adding them to the, the end buckets? It doesn't matter. It will, it, three of them go down by an odd number, and one of them goes up by an odd number. So they change by an odd amount. Okay. Well, an odd number, an odd plus an odd is even, an odd minus an odd is even, an even plus an odd amount is odd, and an even uh, minus, minus an odd is odd. 
Okay. So what happens here is these two evens become two odds, become two evens, become two odds, become two evens, become two odds. And these two odds become two evens, become two odds. So we can notice that we will always have two odd amounts and two even amounts. Okay, this is something called an invariant, and I've given talks uh, to, to uh, high school students about this before, but it's, it's an invariant. So we have a process that's changing, okay, and the, it's changing by prescribed moves. You know, we've got our buckets, and uh, we've got what are called legal moves. So it's changing, and I don't know after, if you pick four legal moves starting with 10, 8, 11, and 7, I don't know what your bucket's going to end up like, okay? I don't know, but... There are things that don't change no matter what legal moves you apply and in what order. Okay, so this is something that's called an invariant. In meaning not, variant meaning variable or changing, not changing, something that doesn't change. And having two odd amounts in the buckets and two even amounts in the buckets doesn't change. Which buckets have which changes, but not the fact that there are two odd and two even. This is, this is what doesn't change, this is what is invariant. So we've noticed that. We've noticed we'll always have two odd amounts and two even amounts. Um, so you get all the same amount. In this case, you could say 9. So you get all the same amount in, in each bucket. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll say it's 9. Well, yeah, 10 plus 8 plus 11 plus 7 over 4 equals 9 would require us to get, and uh, we'll move our explanation over, would require us to get uh, 4 odd amounts. In the buckets but this is impossible as we've seen there will always be exactly two buckets with even amounts. Okay, so we know it's impossible to get all four odd and therefore you can't get 999. So no, no sequence of legal moves will go from 10, 8, 11, and 7 to nine, 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 nine. Okay, and notice that this fits with what we've seen. Okay, we had the same legal moves all the time, but in A part we started with four odds. All four odds on the next move will be four evens, then four odds, then four evens. So it's it's in, it's entirely reasonable to believe that we could get six marbles in each pail, all evens. You know, you just have to do an odd number of moves, and in theory you'll get there doesn't guarantee it. Uh, there might be some deeper theory behind that that shows that uh, if I start with four odds, I can always get any four odd amount that adds up to uh, 24 or whatever. Uh, but in B part, we start with four odds. We eventually get four odds after eight moves. Okay. Notice, by the way, that we wouldn't be able to do it after nine legal moves because by nine moves, it'll have switched uh, to being all evens again. But here, two evens and two odds you will never be able to get all odds or all evens. Okay, So it had nothing to do with the actual numbers here, 10, 8, 11, and 7. Uh, it was something deeper, so the oddness and evenness or parity. Okay. So um, I'm going to flip the page in anticipation of our next question, and that will be question number 
uh, 3. So I will see you guys for that uh, video there. And uh, in the meantime, have yourselves a wonderful day. And thanks for joining me.